Entschuldigung für mein Deutsch, ich werde das in Englisch machen. The, the presentation is a little easier for me, it's more fluent and I have only 80 minutes, so then I don't have to translate everything I say in my mind. So um, I will start with, with just a quick introduction of what is BSH, because I don't think that everybody is aware of what BSH is. And after that introduction, I will take you through the steps uh, that Killian said. So uh, bear with me, this is BSH as it is today. We are not, not satisfied, that is clear, uh, because we have seen in all the presentations today and, and, and this morning uh, that the, the, the industry is changing, the world is changing, and what we are doing, and uh, we call it steel bending, very, uh, very common, uh, is not anymore which will create the value in the future. So what does a company like BSH have to do? We have 50,000 plus employees. Uh, we have 43 war, uh, factories in the world. And now suddenly, uh, the, the classical examples, uh, Airbnb, the biggest hotel without any property, or the taxi company, uh, Uber, uh, which doesn't have one car. And that's us, maybe in the future. We could be confronted with delivery of products uh, at home. So why would you need a fridge if you get every day your fresh food? Uh, why would you need... Uh, uh, a washing machine uh, if the wash is being uh, taken away from you at home and brought back to you in the evening uh, cleaned and ironed. So that's a little bit the challenge where BSH is at and of course at the moment 99% of our business is in this area but where do we want to go? And there we heard it as well today over and over again it's the customer that is changing, it's the customer that decides. 30% of the young people in Germany don't take uh, driver's license anymore. So what does that mean? It means that they will also not buy a car, most likely, or they will be joy driving around. Um, so this is what is happening also with our products. So this is a quite old kitchen, uh, but the, the devices, they are there. The devices brought their analog benefits. It's very clear, it's tangible, it was easy, it is quality, and our consumer was happy. The consumer of the future looks a little bit different. He expects his Appliances, for instance, to be integrated in a smart home. He expects the, 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 the hood to, to order his own uh, filter if it's saturated. He is expecting a lot more of voice control. He thinks, I talk to Alexa, all my appliances should re react. They should know that I have Alexa and that they can interact. And in this way, the consumer, the change in the consumer, the use of mobile devices, uh, the content that he can get, recipes, uh, Zalando makes nice clothing which fit together. We saw uh, just, uh, we have recipe books on iPads, like Kitchen Stories, uh, like Chefling, like many other players, and they will recommend to you what to eat. And then you expect that to work together with your appliances at, at the minimum. Uh, and this is the, the new consumer. And this is why we have to change. We have to change from a hardware company to a hardware plus company, we call that the plus. These are the services around our appliances, which we have to deliver as well, uh, next to the products we already have. And we think we do this with three pillars, which I will take you through. The three pillars are product as a platform, the consumer relationships, and the digital services that are built on top of the two, uh, which you see there. So product as a platform, what does that mean for BSH at the moment? If you look at that, then uh, we are simply, uh, well, simply is a big, uh, a big word. Uh, it's not that simple, but we are making all our products connected. So there will not be any 
product anymore produced, which is not connected to the internet in 2025. Then we will have 30 million products shipped every year, which is fully connected to the internet. We do this, of course, over all our categories, as we call them. So even the vacuum robot is a connected uh, device at that time. What we also do is uh, we have many brands in our house, so we have to think of how to do that for a multi-branded environment. Will each brand have its own app, its own connectivity, or we do that, of course, we do that over the brands, and we, we enable all our brands to be connected to the internet. This is how it looks like today. We are live in 41 countries. We have all the regions covered. Almost 90% of our turnover uh, at the moment uh, has products in the market, but at the moment we sold only two more two million of the connected devices. So the ramp up is happening. There will be enormous movements in the coming years and we will reach this 30 million connected products in 2025. So product as a platform, what are the other benefits? I give you one example because we have a little bit limited time. Uh, this was uh, our first, one of the first connected products. This is a fridge and the big benefit of the connected fridge was that you could make a picture and you could look into the fridge when you were shopping. Great, then you couldn't forget things, but you still had to look on your little screen and this was not great because you could not really recognize what was inside the fridge. So what we did two years later, we added object recognition. So nothing changes the fridge of the consumer state, the fridge as he bought them, but on the application level, he could do a little bit more. We made a list of what is in your fridge. So you had a list with you. That was very nice. And uh, that helped a lot of consumers doing shopping more efficiently. And later, last year, we added also a storage recommendation. Because if we know that, for instance, the strawberries here are in the upper area, this should be in a lower area. So we also help them to store where the product should be. And this is a little bit an example. This is a platform. The product carries more than the product itself. It has services, and we help the consumer uh, to use the product in an optimal way. So that's the platform. If we look a little bit at consumer relationships, is that what we are doing is, is connecting our devices. And by connecting the devices, we can start to learn, learn from consumer behavior, learn what are the consumer pain points, because we don't know the consumer as BSH at the moment. We have never had contact with the consumer to be honest, other than focus groups. So, and now we have this major opportunity, which was kind of ruined, if I can say, by the bigger players in the market, which are already interacting with consumers. If you look at what is happening, George Orwell, if you go to China, you will have a deja vu. This will be really true. Uh, if you look at uh, the online players, Amazon, Zalando, etc., they have also damaged a little bit the trust of our consumer, we think. So, they have made an art of making money from data of consumers. Who bought this, bought that? The very simple scenario. But as you just saw in the Salando part, uh, we can do a lot more with machine learning, artificial intelligence. And how can we deal with that situation that the consumer lost trust uh, basically in technology and is especially in Germany not so eager to share his data? And there we see basically a strong point of us. This is Mr. Robert Bosch, the founder of our mother company. And he had a credo. He said, I would rather lose money than trust. And this is where we really want to play on. So everything we are doing in our app, in our, in our solutions, gives the power to the consumer. Do you want to share your data with Alexa? Yes or no. Do you want to share the data with BSH? Yes or no. And with every single partner we have, we give the power to, to the consumer. So you decide. Of course, if you don't share with us, we can also not help you. But this is our approach. Uh, the service you will get, you will get it in exchange for your data, of course. And this is how it looks at the moment at BSH. So every day we receive 170 million messages of our devices already in the market. It says, I'm on, I have this temperature, I do this program, uh, I wash at 30 degrees. Uh, and in total, uh, if you look at what we collect every year, we have 62 trillion messages, which uh, you get. So great, all this data is coming to us. Uh, now we are the kings, but that's a little bit more difficult than, than that, of course. So what can we do with such a massive amount of data? And this is only the beginning. So if this is 2 million products, then if we sell 30 million products per year, this number looks uh, equally high. So what we do is uh, we start to learn. We start to learn 
from the data we are collecting. So this is an example, the top one, uh, use user, it should be user pattern profiling. So on the usage of a consumer, we can see when he is using his oven, which program he is using, at which time. And from that, we can make profiles and adjust our product portfolio to the profile of consumers. So help them uh, at the right moment with the right solution. And don't make these products like uh, Mr. Hammond said in the morning, uh, like they can do everything. That's great, but they also cost a little bit more. So if you have an oven for the lunch, or for people who are only making lunch in it, this could be a much more efficient solution. And we start to learn from that. Of course, predictive maintenance, we have heard that before, but we can actually predict in some cases already that your device will be breaking down soon. And we could even ring the bell before it breaks down. And that would be great. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the supporting of the learning appliances. So appliances that adapt to the behavior of the consumer. We have a coffee machine which is connected. We know that people don't think beforehand uh, when they make a certain uh, uh, recipe, as we call that, and it's also overflowing. And then they break in the middle of the process the coffee. Oh, no, it's too big. It doesn't fit in my cup, which is really bad for the brewing unit. So if we know this, then we can better educate them. Put the big cup underneath there before you start brewing a, a big recipe, basically. The last one, support of data-driven services and business models. This is basically why we do it. We can learn so much from this data that on top of that, we can make also non-appliance-based business models. And this is uh, where we want to step in. So knowing this, let's look a little bit the vision of Bosch, where we are going with all these connected devices. I hope it works. exaggerated, but it shows a little bit the future where we want to move with, uh, with connected devices. And once we have this product as a platform, as we call it, and we have this consumer relationships, the data, what can we do with that? And this is the final stage, basically, in our journey to become a hardware plus company uh, that is defining digital services. And what's a digital service? This is a little bit an abstract thing. So let me give you also here a concrete example, and there can be more. This is a situation which you are in shit. And, and that also happens with our products. So our products, they have also consumables and they run out of consumables. We saw this morning with Conrad Connect, they have a nice platform which is uh, providing the service to basically fulfill that. And that's exactly what we want to do because the dash button was an oh, this is great, 500,000 sold uh, and, and they are being used, but it's a little bit a stupid thing because you put in your last tab or you have no tabs anymore and then you push the button, you still have to wait for what before it's there. Our machines which are connected, they can be a little bit smarter. They are ahead of time and we can say before you are running out uh, that we will deliver the consumable to your home. You do, don't do this alone and it's already live, for instance, in Germany. I give you a little bit of an example how we are doing that in a much better way than a dash button.
one of the examples of, of how we think to develop services on top of that, I think uh, the colleagues from, uh, from Conrad predicted already that, uh, how much was it, 60% of consumables in the near future will be ordered automatically uh, with most households. So this is an, a way where we will be going and you will not need to uh, care anymore. It will automatically be replenished and you have one less worry in your daily life, which is a real advantage. And there's many consumables in a household, as you know. So we cannot do this alone. And you can also uh, see that we have a lot of partners uh, found already in our uh, Home Connect, uh, as we call it, ecosystem that runs from indeed working together with, with uh, Amazon, with an auto, uh, in, in ways of replenishment uh, groceries or replenishment of of consumables up to content, which we just said. So uh, Kitchen Stories, we acquired as a company. Uh, we have HelloFresh, we have Koch House, we have MyTaste. Uh, last week, we uh, acquired Shefling for one third. So we're really active, not only developing it in our organization ourselves, we are also actively looking at uh, clever uh, mergers and acquisitions in this case. And what you can also see is that the whole world of smart homes or smart assistants like Alexa, like uh, Google Assistant, uh, Ding Dong in, in China, we cannot do it out. We are very good in a kitchen, but the consumer doesn't live only in his kitchen, unfortunately for us. So we need to interact also with the devices he has in his house. And we will make sure that all the devices somebody can have, we are interacting with. So, to wrap it up, we have very nice products. We did that for 50, 60 years already. They are still very good and they deliver the analog benefits. And now we are adding these services together with partners because we cannot do it alone. And this, we believe, will bring the experiences which you need to develop in, in our case uh, to stay actual in the market. And these experiences is, is the power uh, where the combination of the device and the service is, of course, seamless. So you will not even notice that you, know, that you use a service. And that brings us to the future and also to the answer. Are we satisfied? We are not. And that's, we are not. The world is changing. Our industry is changing. And most important, our consumers are changing disruptively. Therefore, we have to change you. We have to become a hardware plus company. We have to evolve our portfolio by inspiring and adding new ideas digital business models, and innovative services. From home appliances to home experiences that simplify our consumers' lives and enrich our relationship with them. We improve quality of life across the globe. We are BSH. And that was it. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. See you guys. Danke, Karl. Danke. Gerne. Jetzt, jetzt habe ich, glaube ich, was dazu gekriegt. Ähm, spannend. Ich habe äh, an ein, ein, ein Erlebnis, was sich mir immer wieder nach vorne gedrängt hat, während ich dir zugehört habe, ist, ähm, kennen Sie das? Sie haben die Maschine komplett eingeräumt, äh, also die Spülmaschine in diesem Fall. Es stehen unten die Spaghetti-Teller und all das, was schön rot ist und so. Und dann wollen Sie den Anknopf drücken und dann sagt die Maschine, bitte Spezialsalz nachfüllen. <lacht> Und dann kriechen sie wieder mit ihrem weißen Hemd irgendwie dann in, diesen, <lacht> in diese Maschine rein und denken sich, das hätte der mir jetzt eigentlich auch mal vorher sagen können. Aber ich habe gute Hoffnung, dass das irgendwann passieren wird, ja, richtig? Wenn man ein Home Connect Gerät äh, kauft, dann ist es tatsächlich vorhand. Ja, so, also das war äh, sehr schön. Vielen Dank für die interessanten Ausblicke, Karel. Und äh, ja, gute, gute Reise dahin. Das ist äh, natürlich ja, auch noch einiges, was ihr vor euch habt. Ja, danke.